The only reason anyone would have been outraged, except for the select few that were furious with Caitlyn a week ago, okay. of which yeah, I have I, seen I almost see. none, right. mm -mm. are folks that whether they, they know it or not, some people right now are watching saying that bothered me. It had nothing to do with race. Yes, it did. Whether you are recognizing, admitting it or not, seeing that taller, proud, imposing black woman taught that white girl something in your reptilian brain it bothered you and the race is inextricably tied to this and folks want to pretend it wasn't it was welcome back to unbiased and unbossed i'm back here today with a video on the controversy surrounding angel reese in the massage noir that was directed at her now massage noir is the intersection of racism and sexism that's specifically directed towards black women. When I initially looked into this, I wondered why a black, a young black woman aggression on court was being policed to the extent that people had to make Twitter, Twitter statements and, and take to TikTok to upload videos. And then I look, looked more into it. Caitlin Clark, who played for Iowa Hawkeyes, she was the great white hype. She was the one that was expected to win, and that's what everyone expected. However, because they didn't focus so much on or give media coverage to other teams, such as LSU, they really didn't expect Angel Reese and LSU to come out swinging the way they did. Ultimately, LSU won, and Iowa Hawkeyes lost. Instead of just taking the L, what they did was the fans, they took to social media to express their outrage. Some of them even made TikTok videos. Just got done watching the women's basketball final for college hoops. And there was a disrespectful act done by an LSU player to Caitlin Clark of Iowa. And Angel Reese knows a ring is coming. Now this is just classless. We do not want to teach this at all for young athletes. As Caitlin Clark, yes, may have been cocky and may have done things to you know, the other team in previous occasions, but it does not be called for after a win is done that you go over to the opponent that dropped a massive amount of points on you and come at them and taunt them. Dis disrespectful and a classless act by LSU here. He lied as an avid fan of Caitlin Clark's he knows that ESPN did a video on her clapback. We love to see a good clapback, right? And no one does that better than Caitlin Clark. I mean, just a couple of days ago in her game against Louisville, she basically told Haley Van Liff, you're down 15 points. Shut up. We're going to go talk to some of her teammates to see what are some of their best Caitlin clapbacks or best motivations. Let's find out. The last game when she was like, you can't see me. <laughs> that really got everyone fired up. When she gets an and one, she'll like go like this and come to the bench and she'll be like, let's go. That's pretty fun. <laughs> she gets pretty fiery in our timeouts. You know, she might even clap back at us because she wants, she wants us to play with that same fire, you know, and sometimes we're pretty even keeled, some of us, but she's like, let's go, come on. Dive on the floor, whatever it may be. She always will just come to me like after a timeout, before I'm at like a tough stretch, we think, and she'll just like give me a little bit of extra reassurance. Honestly, I think the last Elite Eight game, I loved she did the John Cena thing. I think that was so cool. One time, I don't even remember which game it was, but she came over to the bench and I think she had just made a shot or something. She came over to the bench and she just stood right in front of us and was just clapping at us and we all like, there was just a picture of us surrounding her. This is nothing more than white rage, AKA racism. Here you have a white, woman, young white woman, Caitlin Clark, who was the great white hope. Her career had been documented for the past year or so. And over that year, they assessed her great athletic skills and abilities, as well as her aggression, aka those clapbacks. Then here comes Angel Reese, a young black woman who has just as much skill and athletic ability as Caitlin Clark. And she too can do that clapback. Ultimately, LSU defeats Caitlin Clark slash Ohio Hawkeyes. And then comes the white rage. But white people are not going to cannibalize each other like black people. They're not going to turn to this young white woman and say, I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? White men understand that they could not be misogynistic and aggressive and upset towards Caitlin Clark for losing the game. 
That's why they chose to turn all of that rage onto Angel Reese. And what they chose to do is nothing different than what they've historically done to black women, which is racially attack us and disparage us. They called Angel Reese a thug, ghetto, unprofessional, bad for the sport. She was carried, fake champion, and we cannot forget classless. And they were able to do all this because they know that black women are unprotected and there is little to nothing that we can do in return to hold them accountable. To make matters even worse, Jill Biden did something that has never been done. She invited the winners, which was LSU, as well as Iowa Hawkeyes to the White House. So congratulations to both teams. So I know we'll have the champions come to um, to the White House. We always do. So, you know, we'll have LSU come. But you know what? I'm going to tell Joe, I think Iowa should come too because they played such a good game. <laughs> Come on, Jill, the White House is no place for ladies who finish second. I would take, I would think that it's it's ignorance. It could be, some would consider it unconscious bias. I mean, everyone doesn't get a trophy. And if yeah. the team lost, they, they lost, and they don't get to go to the White House. That's that's the wonderful thing about being the winner. You get Did the she trophy. Well, the president knows that, I don't, clearly. I don't know that she knew it or not, but yeah. it was clearly a blind spot. She's got a black vice president to lean on. She spent eight years with the Obamas. I think... At this point, you know, there still could be some racial blind spots and some unconscious bias. And I, I think okay. that this player is saying what a lot of people are thinking. Had it been the black team that lost, perhaps the first lady wouldn't have said that. But you don't I know don't that. So. Because what she, her, her full statement was that she thought that they should go because they played such a good game. Well, Iowa did play a good game, but the other team played a better game. And so, and that, and that's just the deal. And, and that's what comes from me. And that's what we're saying to you, unconscious Dr. Bias. Well, this so. is what we're telling you. As Joe would have said to you, if he knew you were going to make the statement, yeah. that's, that's not how, how this we works. It. Well, her secretary, there statement. was cleanup in aisle six real quick after yeah. the statement. Yeah, because her, every, her secretary came yeah. out and was like, she didn't mean Sonny's that. Sonny's viewpoint <laughs> on Jill Biden yeah. possibly having a racial blind spot was something that I had to sit and think about. But in the end, I came back to my original conclusion, which was this was disrespectful. It was devaluing to the winning team and that it was just something in which she should have just left to Joe. With that said, have I came across performative white women whose allyship was fake? Absolutely. We see this happen on a daily basis where white women who placed themselves in black spaces were only there to further their own personal game. And sadly, this happens far often than maybe most of us think. Angel Reese heard about the invitation that was extended to Ohio, and she responded and said, I'm not going. If it were reversed, it wouldn't be the same. If we were to lose, we would not be getting invited to the White House. You can't go back on certain things that you, you say. I mean, you felt like they, they should have came because of sportsmanship, right? They can have that spot. Like, we'll go to the Obamas. We'll, 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 see, we'll see Michelle. We'll Due see to Barack. LSU accepting the invitation to the White House, Angel has since changed her mind on going. Then there's this idea from the White House where First Lady Dr. Joe Biden says, hey, let's invite the runners up, the Iowa team, and the spirit of sportsmanship. I'm doing air quotes. I'm not even sure if you can see us. But what was the reaction in your locker room with your teammates to that? Yeah, at the beginning, we were hurt. Everything, it was emotional for us because we know how hard we worked all year for everything. And just being able to see that, that hurt us in the moment. But just going back on it, I mean, the team did that experience ever. So being able to go back, and I know my team probably wants to go for sure. And my coach is, is supportive of that. So I'm going to do what's best for the team. And if they would like to go and we decide on we're going to go, then we're going to, we're going to go. But it was tough just seeing that in the beginning. But I think we'll all come together, and I think it'll be good. Okay, so Angel Reese is part of that we that's going to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, that again, that news coming down coming down yesterday that the school had accepted the invitation, and we wanted to, to, to see where Angel Reese yeah, is going to go. Yeah, I'm a team player. I'm a team player. I'm going to do what's best for the team, and I'm the captain. So, While the White House situation may have been resolved, 
This has not stopped people from racially harassing and attacking Angel Reese online. I'm going to show you some of the videos that people uploaded to TikTok, as well as some tweets, and then come back with my final opinion. So I don't keep up much with uh, American college basketball, but what I do keep up with is misogynoir. So I wanted to talk quickly about the Angel Reese situation where she's been receiving abuse from coaches, pundits, um, and social media because she made a gesture towards one of her opponents, Caitlin uh, Clark, in a recent game. Uh, Caitlin made a similar gesture during that very game. Caitlin has been known to say to one of her opponents, um, you're 15 points down, shut up. Like, Caitlin gets praised for her swagger when she behaves in that way, but Angel isn't getting the same treatment. She's been called all sorts of names. I wonder why. I wonder why. We're going to have to have a very real conversation about the disdain that society feels towards confident black women because this is nothing new. When we think about that Venus Williams interview when she was younger and the interviewer was proper pressing her, but like, why do you think you're great? Why, why, why? What do you mean, why do I think I'm great? Show me anybody else like me. Go on. In a society that's already been constructed so that I don't experience greatness, that I don't embody greatness, the fact that I do, wow, extraordinary. And I need to own that. It's just funny to me to hear people say, oh, she's full of herself. When they're talking about Angel Reese, she's full of herself. If I am not full of myself, who should I be full of? Outside of the Holy Spirit, who should I be full of? There is a very real problem with wanting to humble black women when you see them feeling confident, doing wonderful things, and people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to call it misogynoir. They don't want to call it what it is. And so I encourage the black women and girls who are out there, the fact that you are navigating the society and you're capable of love and embodying wonder and curiosity and tenderness and softness, that is amazing. Anybody who doesn't like it can choke. I'm going to run through three things quickly. First one is this. This whole weekend and the whole tournament was amazing for women's college basketball. Caitlin Clark was great for women's college basketball. Angel Reese has been great for women's college basketball. That was the best played game of this tournament, either gender. The shot making, all of it. It, it, it was outstanding. Everything was great about that this whole weekend except for the officiating in that game. Right. That's first of all. Second of all, the reason I said sexism is there is an element of we don't want our female athletes to be as aggressive and swaggery as we want our men, male athletes to be oftentimes. Unless, of course, you're a white female athlete, in which case, even though you are the baddest son of a gun on the court, as Caitlin Clark has been all year, the media will turn you into an underdog. She ain't nobody's underdog. She's talking all the trash, right. and she's backing it all up. And then we get to the third point. A tale as old as time. America does not like the braggadocious, boisterous, authentically arrogant black athlete. And whether you're a man or a woman, there are certain things that are going to set off the criticism alarms, and that is the black athlete, that it doesn't just act like, oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. The black athlete that will say, I just kicked your ass and I'm going to revel in it. And it is especially galling to folks when they're doing that to a white athlete whose ass they just kicked. And it, I understand that there are many, many people, some of whom love this show, and to those people, I apologize. They are more bothered by the discussions of race than they are by actual racism. But the reaction this young woman received was racist. 
right. flat. And you know who was not bothered by it? Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Right. Cause she's, cause she does, cause she does it. And, and, she's a competitor. She's awesome, and she knows it's fair game. Right. And, and look, I, I don't want trash talk. Like I said, I wouldn't have liked it. You don't love trash itself. talk. I love and, trash. Well, that, but that. You don't need to rub it in somebody's face like that when you just beat them, unless they do all the talking sure. too. And she's been talking like that. But taunting, general, you know, a little little gamesmanship here and there, I'm cool with. But they don't even like men doing that nowadays. The NBA, they need the NBA. How many times you just look at somebody after dunking on you and they give you a tech? I think they do need to lighten up. And this overall shouldn't be the big story. The big story should be LSU, the championship. Yeah. The way they, the, the one girl Jasmine Carson comes off the bench, seven for seven all the first three. Half. I mean, that's and Caitlin Clark, to your point, was phenomenal, oh. and that should all be the story instead of this, because it really wasn't that big of a deal. Surprisingly, Caitlin Clark has spoken out about Angel Reese being criticized for something that she did as well. Here's what she had to say. And one of the things people talk about is is race as a component of this. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I don't think Angel should be criticized at all. Um, you know, no matter which way it goes, um, you know, she should never be criticized for what she did. Um, you know, I'm just one that competes and she competed. So um, I think everybody knew there was going to be a little trash talk in the entire tournament. It's not just me and Angel. So, um, you know, I don't think she should be criticized. Like I said, um, LSU deserves it. They played so well. And like I said, I'm a big fan of hers. As a black woman, it was hurtful and concerning to watch a young black woman get torn apart as white rage aka racism was spewed against her for simply doing the exact same thing Caitlin Clark did who happens to be a white woman I think this situation shows that as black women there's still a lot of work for us to do especially considering that black men don't go through this when they win championships like LeBron James and and others I could go on, but I think Angel Reese said it best. All year, I was critiqued about who I was. Nobody, I don't, yeah, 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 the narrative, I don't fit the narrative. I don't fit in the box that y'all want me to be in. I'm too hood. I'm too ghetto. Y'all told me that all year. But when other people do it, y'all don't say nothing. So this was for the girls that look like me, that gonna, that's going to speak up on what they, they believe in. It's unapologetically you. And that's what I did it for tonight. This was for the more than it was bigger than me tonight. It was bigger than me. Twitter is gonna go in a rage every time. And I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I feel like I've grown, helped grow women's basketball this year. I'm super happy and excited. So I'm looking forward to celebrating in the next season. Congratulations by you, baby. Enjoy your win, Angel Reese.